Hey everybody, I'm Boom. I'm Spice. And we're finally doing the short story <laughs> episode number two. Number two. Number two. Months and God. months. Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka and The Swimmer by John Cheever. Boom. Give me your thoughts on The Swimmer. All right, The Swimmer. I like The Swimmer. I think uh, I like that it wasn't super long. Yeah. I mean, I guess I don't know, like the full not as scope long as how long Metamorphosis a short story yeah. is. Metamorphosis was definitely yeah pretty long for a short story, but the swimmer was. I mean, I read that. It took me about a half hour or something like that, and I, with a couple re reads, and I think it was pretty cool. Yeah. It's it's a really interesting thing how it like how it where he starts and finishes in that book. You know, yeah. just over the course of what seemingly or you know like as far as you know is an afternoon yeah but clearly but it, yeah it's a it's a really neat way that he works in like the supernatural aspect of like going through time yeah. and seasons and, and apparently it feels almost loss. as if like like if they were to do a montage in a movie yeah of him like swimming across <laughs> yeah, pools absolutely yeah and then he gets back and he's destitute that seems like the sort of thing that you go through yeah, and it's a it's a neat uh, watching his attitude uh, towards like life and the way people live their lives change. Yeah, you know, like when when he first gets in the pool, every time he's jumping in, he does not use the ladder. Yeah. He won't use the ladder to get out. He uses he just presses up and gets out. He thinks anyone who doesn't, you know, is a, is a wimp. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's not for him. That's not how he lives. And then you know. He start, you know, he starts getting a little tired. Starts getting cold, weak. Yep. And then at the end, you know, that's a that's a big part of it. He starts he starts using those ladders. It's like, what happened to this guy? What do you think your favorite symbol from it has been? It's clearly draped in symbolism. Both of these books, mm -hmm. incredibly symbolic. What's your favorite symbol from it? You think? I might need a minute for that one. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a minute, guys. I I was looking at Spark Notes. <laughs> yeah, I was this just morning. I was just pulling it up. <laughs> yeah, not even. I, I I thought that's something that that's an interesting thing I was going to talk about. Yeah. Like how uh, I used Boom and Spice book <laughs> yeah. advice. I, I used them for both of these. It's even though I mean you you know me. Uh, Boom always always recommends just reading it, but <laughs> as I sit on Spark Notes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's tough. I think it's ingenious the way he uses the pools for the um, passage of time. But I think the most interesting thing is the fact that he named it the Lucinda River as after his wife. And he was cheating on his wife. And then, turns out, after neglect, after using her, using the Lucinda River he's using it as mm. a device and you know to go from point A to point B by the most weirdly rigorous way for some reason he winds up losing her and everything else and that sort of decay I've been curious about when this is set because I'm not too sure because you think of there's two great novels that center around decaying estates where you've got The Great Gatsby and Rebecca. Both set around similar times. Mm -hmm. They're both economic downturns. Although The Great Gatsby, it's more foretelling one. While in Rebecca, it was actively in it. And well, I'm not sure if, like, that, um, I wrote The Great Gatsby. F. Scott Fitzgerald, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if he could tell, but he certainly foretold it on accident, the end of the Gilded Age, and yeah. the onset of the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. So you've got these two books that I've always enjoyed that stand, you know, because they stand sort of um, opposite each other as evidence of decay, of erosion, and how the... Um, the attitudes and um, lifestyles of the rich and wealthy and affluent were unsustainable. At least in uh, the Great Gatsby's case, it's more so the inner machinations of these rich people that wind up ruining their lives because they 
conspire against each other and scheme and um, sort of subvert each other in such a way that it makes it untenable to live with each other. And then in Rebecca's case, it's a similar deal where you've got, you know, Max working at his own ends, Rebecca manipulating him, and then um, Miss, um, shoot, what's the name of? Uh, Danvers? Yeah, Miss Danvers um, being so headstrong that she winds up ruining everything just as a way of revenge, you know, sort mm -hmm. of if I can't have her, no one can. And um, I feel like the swimmer might be um, a bit of that. Absolutely. I can totally see or the similarities, yep. yep, and just the downfall of him. A spiral. Um, have you given thought to your favorite symbol? So there's, there's a lot to choose from. What about a symbol? <laughs> Give me a symbol you like. Hey, man. It's, I'm not, it's been a minute. I know you know symbolism. I do. I know I you've do. read it. I, I, I do and I have. I do and I have. Uh, I thought what you uh, pointed out about climbing in and out of the pool, jumping, mm -hmm. I thought that was a great Yeah, symbol. you know, I, that's probably... That's, I think you might be right. Oh, you know what? <laughs> The idea of seasons, because it sort of uh, parallels the idea of seasons of life, mm -hmm. where um, you know things come in seasons, things come and go. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's. It goes that's through cool little idea. seasons, yeah. and he winds up going through a season of life, mm -hmm. one that ends in his utter turmoil and destitution. And um, yeah, I think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And it, I th it's also, I like the way. They portray he portrayed his total uh, blindness to what's happening to him. I oh, mean, because yeah. like he's getting to these, you know, he gets to his these parties, and he's like, man, you know, these people invite me all the time. Like, they're gonna be lucky to have me be here. Oh yeah, somebody. He, <laughs> he gets there and they're like, what are you, what are you doing here, man? What <laughs> the heck? Yeah, he's very. Um, he has these expectations of people that are just unrealistic. Yeah. He he, he, he has a weird perception of himself. Exactly. That's, oh, yeah, he's Spark very... Notes actually had a quote about that. That was really interesting. Really? <laughs> hey, <laughs> Spark Notes. Let me see. I had a bunch of tabs open. Let's see. Um, oh, no, I'm in the... I'm in the metamorphosis one. Let's see. The swimmer. There we go. I've got them both open. Um, I'm almost there. Boom. Stall for time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you got? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the swimmer. Found it. <laughs> <laughs> no so. problem. No problem. That's how, that's how we do things here. <laughs> Easily. Tra flawless transition. Of course. John Cheever wrote, and I quote, He was not a practical joker, nor was he a fool, but he was determinedly original, and had a vague and modest idea of himself as a legendary figure. He's not. He's a weirdo. He's not, he's not a super well-liked guy around town. He has this perception of himself as this guy who's beloved, and it's a question of whether he was really ever beloved at all. Or if, as time progressed, as he continued to grow in the pool, if he sort of lost the respect that he did have, or if he never had it at all. That's the question for me. Yeah, because he, yeah, he absolutely starts off very self-righteous. Yeah. In Very his, I mean, just yeah. I mean, his decision to swim home through the Lucinda River, he expects is going to be a monumental thing. Like, Not just this that, going to be legendary. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, he expects to. Come. Like this is going to be, yeah, this is going to be something that people know about. This is like this is huge. It's like what a lame thing to. And the, yeah, when you really think about <laughs> exactly. it, exactly, you're you're just swimming in pools. Not only that, for a no, while. I mean, swimming across a pool, not difficult. No, even big something pools, children can do. Even big pools, 
they're, they're not that big. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can they're pools. A big pool. yeah, exactly. and, and, and these they're, are res- residential pools. And it's not made, like he's yeah. at an Olympic, you know, Olympic pool yeah. swimming laps. And they're made to be easily traversed. Yeah, they're, they're made to be like chest height. Yeah, I was gonna say they, likely anyway. Maybe, you, maybe you next height yeah. you can walk around. Yeah, and then they're they're not. Oh, Sheldon, get away from the mic, bud. Come on. Can you like grab him? <laughs> I, I've never seen him this close to the mic. It's like I'm afraid he's gonna take a sip of my water. You hold him like a baby. <laughs> oh. oh, doesn't like to sit down no. <laughs> when you hold him. <laughs> They've got one more quote in um, Spark Notes. They say, um, and I quote John Cheever. Why, believing as he did that all human duracy was susceptible to common sense, was he unable to turn back? Why was he determined to complete his journey even if it meant putting his life in danger? At what point had this prank, this joke, this piece of horseplay become serious? So he saw, like, Abduracy, I hadn't known this word before. Uh, it's like obstinance. It's uh, being very um, headstrong and um, just not like being very um, just adaptable. And it feels like um, yeah, he's just it, it might be why his marriage failed outside of being a um, a cheater is being so pig-headed yeah. that he can't seem to change his mind even when he's tired and hungry yeah. and making life more difficult for himself. Another thing I'm recalling is uh, the uh, the amount of alcohol he's drinking oh, yeah. throughout the whole time and how that's like a comfort at these houses. And then you know, like once he once he can't get any, I think it's by about the time he gets to his like ex side chick, <laughs> for lack of a better term, mistress. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, by, by the by, uh, by the time he gets there, and she refuses it. But every time he stops at a new place, he grabs a drink, swims along, and then I think you know that that could probably tie into. Maybe what ha- what went so wrong with his marriage too that normally doesn't lead to healthy relationships. If that's how you deal with yeah, it's your how you cope. increasing struggles, is just have another drink. Yeah, to drown them. Not good. And then metamorphosis. So dude turns in the bug. That, <laughs> that, that happened. Gregor and Gregor Samsa. What do you think? It it's an interesting one, and uh, there's a couple things interesting about it beyond just like Gregor's normal life, yeah, right? yeah. like his crazy life yeah. beyond being a bug, or I guess his family is like in debt to his work, and you know he has to be there. And if he's not like at that bus, like he's got people at his door. I mean, yeah. like I'll get a phone call if I miss work, and like yeah. maybe an angry email, but like he's got someone like. Just because he didn't get catch the right bus, like yeah. not, assuming he just might be late, they're knocking on his door, and then if you know he's not in for a while, they thought they, he was they, like they bring the boss. Yeah. yeah, they're they're very concerned. Yeah. And he turned into bug, and yeah, he's a bug the whole time. It wasn't even that he wanted to miss work. Yeah, he didn't want to at all, and he couldn't say anything <laughs> about it. He was bug. I think it's uh, interesting. He doesn't explain why he's bug, why he turned to bug, what caused him to turn to bug. No. He's just bug. He is. He is. It's meant to be sort of absurd in that way. Yeah, there's a lot of ab- absurd stuff going on a- as he's a bug, you know, because you know the people get in there, they're they're pretty freaked out that he, he's he's apparently a pretty regular guy. Like he goes yeah. to work. Yeah. All the time. So when he's not there, they're very alarmed. Like his mom is like panicked. His dad's calling a locksmith, or vice versa. They're both they're both in an uproar. Yep. Uh, he's he's got his work there, and then they get this door open, and the poor guy's a bug. He can't his, even talk. He can't talk. Plead They're his case, yeah. and they are terrified. 
Rightfully so, I assume. I, don't I mean, know. I I would be alarmed if there's a big bug, but it's like there's no Gregor, e, e, Gregor either. Like, well, you, you kind of put assume that, together, that he's the 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 man sized bug, or the bug ate him, which could be true. Probably not. I well, I mean, he, he probably maybe wouldn't. turned into a bug. <laughs> there's one illustration yeah. of metamorphosis I see online all the time in memes. Where it's the bug on the bed because you know he can't get up right for a yeah oh yeah he's sitting on because he's on his back he's yeah exactly he's like in a turtle position Mm -hmm. and it's just him like like stand like 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 with his arms up it almost looks triumphant in a way (laughs) and I um I had knee surgery and I was bed bound for a while and it reminded me of it (laughs) (laughs) oh man is that is that Bam at the door I think that's just Sheldon. Chasing Just his tail. Oh shoot! I'm sorry. Gosh, I I didn't realize that table leg was there. Um, God, what a mess. Um, I think the idea of the um, I I think it speaks to his will to work. That he was ready to go to work as bug. Yeah, I, this was like that was the least of his concern. Was like, man, now I'm. A bug. It, he he hadn't even realized. He's just yeah. trying. He's like, he's like, man, I can't get up. I'm a mess. I'm like, I can't. I'm, I'm all kinds of messed up here. But like, I got to get on this bus. He didn't give himself a second thought there. It's very realistic in reactions. I think it's. I I feel like um, I feel like Franz Kafka lived a very poor life for a while. Because the reaction of like when they become landlords, because they're not getting Gregor's income, and the tenants realize they've been living with Bugman, and they're like, "Hey, we need our rent back because we've been living with this Bugman, this abomination, yeah, in this house." <laughs> I forgot about the tenants. <laughs> it's um really neat that. He'd write them so realistically. Yeah, that that's another crazy thing with this book is how it's, and I guess it it's it's pretty realistic is how quickly you can just uh, adjust to crazy stuff happening. I mean, he's he's been a bug for a while in this, and I mean oh, yeah. that's just how it is. It's like okay, he's. He's a bug now. We'll we'll feed him every now and then. We're not gonna do anything much with you know. We're not gonna risk much contact, but you know we'll feed him, and that's just like life now. They just have have a bug in the room, and the the reactions vary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> very strongly and very varied. Mom's right afraid. Right at the beginning, yep. yeah. Mom's afraid. Dad like is feeds him into yeah. his room. He's got like a gash on him. Yeah, Ain't... from it. And then, uh, and then the sister's sister's sister is curious. pretty, yeah, curious. Um, still almost standoffish, yeah. She still treats him like bug man. Yeah, he, and he, she doesn't, yeah, and she, you know, because there's a while there where she's feeding him, and you think like maybe there's a chance that they can, I don't know, be friends, friend and bug. But I, it never really happens. She gets scared anytime he does anything. It's reminiscent of Victor Frankenstein and how he reacts to the monster. But it's different in the sense that Victor's the reason the monster exists. But we don't know why Gregor is a bug. And his family doesn't know. No, and and Gregor doesn't Gregor doesn't know. He yeah. doesn't know, and he doesn't have the ability to communicate to, communicate to no, them. By the end of Frankenstein, the monster is able to be like, just hey like, man, yeah. like, chill. I'm. I am not trying to fight you. I just yeah. want you to like. I wanted you to accept yeah. me. That's yes. not happening. No, no. Can I you want at least revenge. just give me. Yeah. Someone yeah. Yeah, to I hang want a, out with. I want a mate, and if I can't get a mate, I want violence. Yeah. No. He didn't have that chance. So I no. guess I can yeah. see why it's so hard to just become comfortable being with him. They didn't, and why you wouldn't just chance going in the room because you still. I mean, as far as they know, that's a bug that ate their son living in their house they can't get rid of. I wonder if Kafka read Frankenstein and was like, let me one-up this. In the sense of, like, let me make more realistic portrayals of humans. 
which I'm a slice of life guy. I know we're we're dipping our toes into the fantasy well, but that's what I uh, generally thrive with. That's that's why I like writing, and that's why I like reading. And it's interesting to me that so much of this is realistic surrounding Bugman. Sort of like, um, was it District 9? You know that movie? I've definitely heard of it. There's um, this Bug District, like Bug Alien District in America in this movie. And it's meant to be sort of dystopic, sort of um, it's meant to be a commentary on real life events. I think it was post Katrina. I think it was sort of a comment on those refugees a bit. And it's reminiscent of this because it's realistic reactions to a very absurd problem, a very unrealistic issue. And I think that's um, I think that's valuable. I really enjoy that. It grounded it for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, any last thoughts? Uh, I guess we can uh, we can see if we had any favorites between the two, or if they're two just st- starkly different to be able to pick. Metamorphosis. That's what I was going to yeah. pick, and that's I, I mentioned it earlier. And I'm glad I, I just uh, reminded myself. It was interesting since it's been so long since we've like originally read these. Oh yeah. I was. I, I had to do a lot more uh, rereading of yeah. the swimmer than I did metamorphosis. Exactly. I think that says something about like how how much I was like into metamorphosis while I was reading it, but not so much. The swimmer's got a lot going on. Yeah, there's a lot happening. Metamorphosis, I guess it's okay. still a lot, yeah. but it's just you know, guys, a bug. It's you know, it's not you know. It's also long going through. It yeah. is a lot longer, and it's um. Guy is bug. Guy gets um, disrespected by family. Yeah. Family has tenants. Tenants leave. Bug dies. It's a lot of stuff is happening, like stuff yeah. that's just actually happening that you're told. I yeah. mean, like you're you're being told what's going on. In it's, the swimmer, it's yeah. a lot more like you oh know, yeah, the scene the is described, yeah. but you have to infer a lot. Yeah. About what he's trying to say. There's a reason we said four symbols for the swimmer and a symbol in, well, him and then his family and the tenants. They're just people. But then you get like, how did the guy climb in and out of the pool? Well, you know, the alcohol, the name of the river, the way the weather interacts with them, the way people interact with them. There's a lot more variables. So. The swimmer's a little more intricate. Metamorphosis is more popular for a reason. It's easier yeah, to explain. Yeah, absolutely. Easier to read, easier to explain. But I like them both a lot. So for next time, I've got two short stories. One I've read before, the other one I've skinned. The first one is Click Clack the Rattle Bag by Neil Gaiman. I chose this one because it's a little easier in terms of um, it, there's not a ton of symbolism to be had, just because that's not really the point. And it's just a spooky little story. It's a fun, spooky little story. It's a little less than 20 pages. You can find it online. And Neil Gaiman's a great author. So I think you'll have fun with Click Clack the Rattle Bag. Um, and then... Uh, is that right? I'm trying to make sure I have the right number of pages, and I think it is. I just want to make sure. Yep. And then the other one, this one I haven't read much, is Flannery O'Connor's The Turkey. It is like the third story? No, let me see. It's like the fifth or sixth story in my big tome of stories by Flannery O'Connor be the third one I've ever read by her and it's just about a guy hunting a turkey and stuff happens and you're comparing Slice of Life to Neil Gaiman who's meant to be very mysterious very spooky mm-hmm. very fantasy oriented uh, which one are you more excited for? I know which one you're more excited <laughs> for. Hey, 
You know what? I'm actually. I think. I think I'm. I think I'm looking forward to the rattleback. It's a uh, click, yeah. click, click, click clack click. the rattleback. Yeah, click clack the rattleback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it sounds. They both sound interesting. I'm excited for this round of them. I like and. I don't know as much, as much time as we <laughs> in the past as we take in between these. I guess length isn't really an issue. Stories, but I do. I like being able to go quick. And and still be a lot there. You know, it, short stories are really cool in that way. I've got an idea. I've got paper copies of these two short stories. And I've only got one of each. How about I read one first, you read the other one while I read it. We swap next week. There we go. Which one do you want to read first? Collect the rabbit. Yep. All right. Collect I've already got back. the page dog ear. Sweet. All right. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. All right. Fantastic. I'll read the turkey this week. Next Tuesday, we will swap. All right. And to our listeners at home, that was Flannery O'Connor's The Turkey and Neil Gaiman's Click Clack the Rattle Bag for next week. And today, we covered, finally, The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka and The Swimmer by John Cheaper. And on that note, I'm Spice. I'm Boom, and we will see you next time. <laughs>